autonomous driving. Welcome to the future. I almost died once doing a self-driving car, so these first few seconds are always a little nerve-wracking. So you'll notice the two consoles here. This one is the aptive view of how the vehicle perceives the world around it. And then here is the lift console, and this is sort of a lightweight experience for the passenger. In the beginning, it's more about making sure that the passengers are aware of where we're going at a high level and why the vehicle is making the decisions that it's making. Um, but also eventually it'll get to the point where um, it'll be the interface for passengers to actually start um, getting more of those creature comforts, you know, things like um, heat and air conditioning and, and other things that you might ask a driver to do when you're already in a lift. Lane change checking. Changing lane. I'm seeing the pedestrians in the crosswalk on that screen before I'm actually seeing them with my own eyes. We so. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. They are bringing in self-driving cars here in the Las Vegas Strip. I saw many self-driving cars yesterday that's actually being tested here in the Las Vegas Valley. And it's just gonna be very, very exciting, believe it or not. Now there's a lot of positive and there's a lot of negative effects about self-driving cars. But I am very, very optimistic about what is gonna be the picture. Now, one of the impacts. Now before I begin, I just want to say it's a really, really hot day today. The temperature is around 110 degrees. I was just checking out the Tropicana pool, free, open to locals, believe it or not. And even though it is pretty hot, I will tell you this heat beats much of the country. There are similar temperatures in the east with higher humidity. And believe it or not, near coastal locations in Southern California is actually hotter than here. So and with higher humidity too. So let's talk about self-driving cars. They've been testing them a lot. I think that m many of you don't know this, but self-driving cars are gonna be a shared product. So when these self-driving cars come to the Las Vegas area, believe it or not, a lot of paid for parking services are gonna disappear because there's not gonna be a need to park the cars anymore. This is one of the things that you have to really understand. So what's gonna happen to Jim Murin and all these other people that are charging for parking? And, you know, there's gonna be all these empty parking structures. So what are they gonna do? Well, perhaps they're gonna have to demolish the structures and they're gonna have to basically convert them into more conventions, hotels, condos, offices, shops, and the list goes on. And of course, you know, a lot of different factors. Insurance companies that benefit from car crashes, lawyers, police officers that give tickets, cities that raise money. What about all the traffic lights? Is there gonna be a need for traffic lights with self-driving cars? They are testing these things here in Las Vegas. Think about all the real estate, believe it or not, that's gonna be lost, that's gonna be available with self-driving cars. Not to mention lower costs for developers like myself who want to develop things here in Clark County. But also keep in mind that a lot of empty vacant land, a lot of asphalt pavers are gonna lose money. Not to mention that retail keeps disappearing time after time. So this is just really, really interesting. Now, of course, there's the issue with job losses. There's a lot of people that drive taxis, limos, shuttles, Uber drivers, a lot of them which are foreign born. They're gonna be hit very, very hard. But then again, the cost, you have to keep in mind. But then what I was also talking about is just how, my goodness, this is just gonna be really, really huge. And one of the things that, of course, the cost is gonna come down, people might have to spend more money on drinks, lower DUI risks. So this is gonna have a substantial impact on society. And other than that, tell me guys what you think about this. Do you think this will be very, very influential? The Las Vegas Valley has one of the highest per capita parking spots than any other place in the country. So a lot of vacant land means a lot of empty real estate. And there's just going to be a lot, a lot of opportunity. I just wanted to really, really talk about is also what about all the court cases, the gridlock in our court system because there's all these car crashes. You know, the firemen, the police, the ambulances that's needed. Think about that. Think about all the change that we're going to see in our our urban environments as a result of these self-driving cars. You know, one of the reasons our cities look so much more beautiful is simply because of the fact that it focuses on people, nature, 
public spaces, and not so much on the automobile, and especially parking lots and structures. So I think our cities are going to be really revitalized, they're going to be reused, they're going to be redeveloped, and they're going to look more old-fashioned, especially. And there's going to be a lot of redevelopment in downtown Las Vegas, even a district at Green Valley Ranch. Not to mention the outskirts development that I'm planning on doing, it's going to change drastically, which means that there's going to be less for pavements, garages, not to mention it's going to be more human scale than there's going to be a lot of pedestrian only streets. So this is going to make our cities a lot more beautiful, not to mention there's going to be a lot more money left over to build more beautiful structures and shared spaces. So. This is one of the things that you kind of have to really understand. So it's, it's going to be very much of a yummy experience to do redevelopment. Our commutes, think of what's going to happen. People are going to choose longer commutes because they don't have to wake up so really, really early to get to work. So maybe they can drive a mile in 30 minutes, knowing the f in the car, they can multitask, they can do a lot, a lot of different things basically to experience a longer commute. Think about how much this is going to have an impact on immigration. So now there's going to be a lesser need for cheap labor and therefore there's going to be a lesser need to hire foreign born individuals for cheaper labor because now the jobs are going to be obsolete. What about valet? When self-driving cars come, valet obsolete. Sorry to say that, but cars are going to drive by themselves. They'll pick somebody up and the cycle... Okay. Sorry, that's just technology. Good luck to you. Huh? Exactly. Amen to that. And so, you know, then again, what's going to happen to a lot of these people who are, are out of work, who are taxi drivers? Huh? No, I live here in Las Vegas. I have my own apartment. It's too affordable to live in Las Vegas. So I have to live with my mom. But anyway, yeah, this is going to be the largest gridlock to immigration will be the technological inefficiencies with labor. The same with housekeeping. A lot of jobs that are low skilled and immigrants do, especially here in Las Vegas, is going to change. Think about the houses. We're going to bring back higher quality homes that you see in the Victorian era. In other words, what's going to happen is that, remember the beautiful home with the beautiful front facade? You're going to see more of that because you're not going to need the build a garage because of self-driving cars. Social life life is going to change, you know, less stress of driving people over if they don't have a car, more socializing in the car, less stress, not to mention the urban environments are going to change. Status, think about that. Think about the fact that when you see that generally you've got obviously a lot of people who are not going to judge you by the car that you drive, believe it or not. This is one of the things that you have to keep in mind. So when people are judging you by you know, how much money you have, a lot of that's going to go away because the status is going to disappear. The economy, a lot of our economy depends on the maintenance, depends on the upkeep of private vehicles, not to mention the accidents that happen. So a large part of our economy is going to disappear. Car dealerships, just the list goes on. A lot of jobs are going to change. And think about that. Mom and pop stores, I think, are going to prosper. So if we see a less car dependent landscapes, the big box retailers are going to be in trouble because obviously the mom and pop landscapes can really stand up very, very well. Public transportation with self driving cars, it's going to be cheaper to hop on a car. So then, therefore, lesser need for buses and light rail. So perhaps public transportation is going to improve greatly over time. So we're going to see more personal rapid transit, maglevs, and the list goes on. The environment. We manufacture too many cars. A lot of resources have to be extracted, mined, everything. Just all of that. And then, of course, they have to be repaired once the cars get damaged. Not to mention all the parking lots and pavement that take place into actually building the cities and so forth. Now, of course, it's very likely that these self-driving cars will be using electricity. So that's another impact on the environment. But just because they're electric run, they still could use natural gas and coal, not necessarily renewable. So anyway, take care. Let me know what you guys think. This is going to be very revolutionary. 
I can't wait for the urban landscape, especially the change for Las Vegas. So Hello everybody, hope everybody is doing well today. So, as you can see here, the Supreme Court decision was made and we have some people who are just not happy, so. Yep, just a lot of the pro-choice people are not very, very happy. And as you can see here, we have Aaron Ford right over there. We also have Oh, you know the guy in the gray suit and the white hair over there? It's actually way over there talking right now. That's Steve Sizzlack. And I believe we have Nelson Arujo right over there. So let's see what's going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. And we've got uh, Action News 3 here. What's up? How's it going? Good. So they're interviewing right now. There's water and ice. Mm -hmm. So, got all this stuff right here. So, how's it going, everybody? I need to sign this. I don't want them to run out. Okay. Not happy? Not happy? Yeah. Why? That's what I see. Not happy? What are you then? Who are you? Uh, somebody invited me. I'm just taking a look at it. Somebody named Jake uh, Marco invited me to come. Oh, I'm not. Okay. Alrighty. It's great to see people are out there speaking their opinions. So I, I basically just said, how's it going? And they just, they just give me this reaction. So, mm -hmm. How's it going? Sizzlack. Nice surprise. Well, women's rights are women's rights, and it's their decision to choose. Okay. So, this is what I hear today. Mm hmm. I live in this. I live in two. I will throw it away. Okay, we'll move it. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Mm hmm. Okay, so basically, he, he, here is my, here's my take in all this. I I just think that I don't know why why should I have an opinion on this at all, like an opinion on guns. Okay. It doesn't solve the root cause of the problem, okay? So if you have gun control, if you legalize this, you just have to look at the root cause of the problem. Personally, I don't give a damn if whatever gets legalized or not. It's none of my business. But, of course, 
what I really want is people to be responsible for themselves, you know. You know I, I, I prefer women to make their own responsibility and to see what's going on. So that's what we're seeing. So all of a sudden this just basically disbanded because of that. And you can see here So I don't think I'll ever get an abortion. Why sh why or should I support it or not? Well, I think you probably shouldn't, but I don't think it's your right to tell me. Okay. Whether I should or not. Uh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I honestly I I don't have an opinion because I just think the people so should should just, you know, should just like, you know, make their own decisions, never you know. Your daughter cuz nobody would want Exactly. Her people should make their own decisions that's the whole thing. but i just prefer people should be responsible right and they should uh -huh. be. Mm -hmm. but it's not your place to tell them what responsibility is ah uh, okay well that's fine uh -huh. self responsibility mm -hmm. i'll be responsible for me you be responsible for you and then we're all good that's nice awesome Okay. So there you have it. He's being interviewed. And he's trying to appeal to the pro life crowd. We'll have to see. Mm hmm. Okay, so now it's time for me to explain why this decision is very, very important to me and why I think that this is going to have long-lasting consequences, okay? Now look at this right here. I want to know, like, you have like three Metro Police officers over there. Senator Dean Heller? Huh? Senator? Yeah, this is Senator Dean Heller right over there. Oh, he's going to see them. Uh-huh. Hello. How's it going? Going well, thank you. Having fun? You bet. Who's Okay. I don't know what's going on. Look, Sizzlack is going to um, the cop cars. I don't know. We'll have. <laughs> I don't know. Well, the cops were after me, honestly, you know. Not friendly. I was just saying hi, that's it. <laughs> just saying hello. We understand that everybody's different. This is public property. So I don't know why he's bringing in the cops for some reason, but Now, why I think that this decision is important, because this will have a lot of impact on immigration. Now, if you guys don't know, that I think this Supreme Court decision will have an impact on birthright citizenship. 
and it's unfair to me that my parents did it legally and they gave me to a citizen child but somebody comes here without legal documentation their child doesn't become a citizen so this is why it's important to me and I also hope that they do something about DACA deferred action childhood arrivals it's not fair to me my parents came here legally and that they get a pass so we have a lot of immigration massively into Las Vegas and worst of all, unlike Silicon Valley, we really don't benefit from massive immigration. All we get is more traffic, more people who don't speak English. See, that's the thing. They can't debate my facts. My words and my phrases do not sound pretty, and they can't debate my facts. It's just... Oh, yeah. Can I get your name for the photo? Sure, absolutely. Hopefully you put immigration in it, because that's very important. So wh wh why is Sizzlack with like seven, eight police officers? I just want to know. Are they trying to go after me? You know, I, I have my First Amendment constitutional right, you know? Can I get your name? I don't know if maybe Sizzlack wants to take away my freedom to speak. Okay. I don't know. Cyrus Hojati. How do you spell it? S I R U S? No. Oh. C Y R U S H O J J A T Y. H O. I'm sorry. H O. J J A T Y. A T Y. Mm hmm. Like that? Mm hmm. Okay. And you're, um, you're talking about immigration right now. Yeah. Okay. So I decided to have an, uh, the, this was the only reaction event to this uh, thing and I just wanted to come here so uh, and, you know we're, we're just not really benefiting from all this immigration here in Las Vegas this is not Silicon Valley we're just gonna get crowding and competition that's all we're gonna get Pero el tiempo 